Hello, and welcome back to the x -Plane Scenery Development Series here on YouTube. In today's video, we'll be going over object optimization for models in x -Plane. So what exactly do I mean when I say object optimization? Well, let's take a look at this really quick, simple aircraft hangar. Now in this situation, we actually have an underside surface here. You can see it, I've got it selected. But if you think about it, you will never really see this surface when you're in X-Plane because it's contained within the building and it's just laying flat on the ground. So we can go ahead and get rid of it and remove a face. And you have to be careful because the way that you build out your models can sometimes create some additional hidden faces that you might not even know are there. For instance, when I built this model, I created the rectangle and then I created a triangle right here and I pushed that all the way through to the rear of the model. Now, the rectangle had a top surface and it's still going to be there. If we look at the underside, you'll see that there is no peak running along the building. And that's because there's actually a hidden surface right here that we can now remove. And now you can see our building is completely hollow and we've removed two faces that X-Plane no longer has to try and render. We can do some additional cleanup as well. We can go ahead and get rid of these two lines right here and cut down our faces a little bit more. Now, in this situation, it doesn't really matter a whole lot because the SketchUp to X-Plane plugin is going to slice these faces up anyway, and it's gonna give us those lines back, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. If there's a face that you feel you can remove or a line that you can remove to create one larger face, go ahead and do that. A good example of a line that would be totally pointless you can actually remove and will save you a face is right here. So we actually have two faces at the moment and the SketchUp to X-Plane plugin is going to go back and put some lines in, but it's going to double the amount of lines that we need because of this arbitrary line that we just created. So if you remove it, we can save a little bit on the efficiency. So let's take a look at a way that most people commonly fail to optimize their models for X-Plane. And we'll go ahead and we'll create a circle. Now, by default, when you create a circle in SketchUp, if you look at the lower right-hand corner, you'll see it says sides 24. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a circle with 24 different sides. If we pull this out, we can see what that looks like. And sure enough, we've got all these different sides here. While that count might be perfect for something that's large, such as a fuel tank, when you're dealing with something very small, that's probably a bit overkill. So we'll go ahead and undo that real fast. And we'll go back to our circle tool or just press the C as in Charlie key. And again, we've got sides 24, but there's a really quick way to change that. So if I just type in one, two, enter, we now have a 12 sided circle that we are creating. Or of course we could do a six sided circle by just pressing six, enter, etc. cetera. Uh, you can do that for many of the different measurements and options such as lines and boxes and all sorts of other stuff, including circles. So the question becomes, when do you use how many sides for what part of a model? And really it all sort of depends on what exactly you're building. Again, if you're building a big fuel silo that's somewhere close to the ramp, you might want a little bit more definition. So you're going to create something with a higher number of sides. But if we're talking about, for instance, the wheel of a static car that's in a parking lot, that's a half mile away from the ramp, then a six sided circle would be absolutely acceptable. Also, I would be remiss if I didn't mention too that one of the biggest things that you can do to optimize your objects for X-Plane is lowering the resolution and the file size of the texture images that you're using to texture the model. If you can get away with using a 256 by 256 pixel texture, use that instead of a 2048 by 2048. As a bonus, I wanna talk about something that we briefly touched on in the last video, and that is grouping and additionally, using components within SketchUp to optimize your workflow. Now, the way that grouping works is if you create something and throw it in a group, it's sectioned off from everything else. So why is that useful and how does that work? I'll go ahead and create a quick square, turn to a cube, and we'll make a couple of these. So we'll just copy it over and copy it over. Now what we can do is we can actually take this and if we move this one over and touch these two together, something happens. This all becomes one big giant piece that's stuck together now. If I wanna just select this cube and try and move it away from the other cube, I can't do that because they're kind of welded together. Now the way to get around that is to throw your model into a group. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this first cube that we have, we're gonna select the whole thing, we're gonna right click and click make group. Now, if we select this and move it over, 
you'll see that we can still select just this one cube. If we select all this, it's completely separate. So this is really fantastic when you're trying to create pieces that you don't want to stick together. You may also notice that up here in the outliner section, we have a group layer essentially, uh, and we can use this to select that and move it around and do whatever else we want to do with it. Now that it's in a group, in order to go in and edit something, you'll see that if we just click on it one time, we're selecting the entire group. To get in and select specific faces like we can over here, what you have to do is you have to double click on the group and you'll see it sort of changes the context that we're in. And now we can go through and edit this object just like we would normally. While groups are really useful for sort of keeping stuff sectioned off, components are fantastic. Components are a great tool for reducing the amount of work that you have to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the first two cubes that we made. And we're going to right click on our grouped cube and we're going to go to the explode option. And what that does is it basically takes it out of the group. So now you see we just have the cube like we had originally. If we reselect the entire thing and we right click and do make component, click create again. Again, it looks similar to a group, except now it's a component has a slightly different icon. And the great thing about this is if you copy this, all the changes that you make to any copy will be synced with every copy that you have. Now that might sound a little confusing. So let's do a quick demo. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this component over and we're going to go into this first one again, double click to go into it and we're going to change something. So what we're going to do, is we're going to put a line right down the middle. And after I click, you'll see that not only is it reflected in the one that I'm currently editing, but it's reflected in the copy as well. This is great when you're creating something that has a lot of repetition, or if you want to do something that's very difficult to do and you need at least one other copy. Instead of having to do all that work twice, you do it one time, turn it into a component, and simply duplicate it. And then if you ever need to change anything, you can go back and just edit that one version of it and the changes will be reflected in every other version that you created. This is especially helpful when you're trying to texture something. If you componentize it first before you've textured it and then duplicate it over, you only have to texture the component one time and then the texture will be spread amongst all of your different copies. I hope that video was helpful for you and I really can't urge you enough to use components anytime you're creating a model in SketchUp. It saves you a ton of time and not only the modeling process, but especially with the texturing process. That does it for today, but our next video will be on animations, and you certainly don't want to miss that. Thank you.